Computer vision is concerned with tasks like object recognition, automatic interpretation of facial expressions and image segmentation, among many others. To determine which computer vision algorithms are better at each of these tasks, we typically rely on large manually annotated datasets. However, performing well on any given dataset is not the same as solving a specific vision problem. For example, getting close to perfect results on ImageNet does not mean that the problem of object recognition has been solved. We are all familiar with the concept of overfitting to the training data. Overfitting to the testing data is less known but equally common. Consider for example the topmost plot in the slide. Given a finite set of training samples shown here as red dots, there is an infinite number of functions that map the input variable to the output variable. Depending on the algorithm we use, we will end up with one solution or another. But which of these results will best generalize to unseen testing samples? The answer is, it depends. This is shown in the bottom three plots, where the function at Yale's better generalizations are given. Note that the function that generalizes best actually changes as the testing data varies. Change the testing data or evaluation criterion and the generalization gap between training and testing changes too. Is there a better way? Can we ever know whether a computer vision or machine learning algorithm will perform well once released? We show that it is indeed possible to estimate the performance of modern computer vision algorithms even without the need of a testing set. Deep neural networks that generalize have specific functional connectivity patterns, which differ from those observed when the network memorizes training samples. As shown on the left, memorization is indicated by local activations of a small number of nodes in each layer. Think about this as the network using a tiny number of local parameters to memorize a sample, while using other local parameters to memorize another. In contrast, when a network generalizes, its functional activation pattern involves a large number of parameters distributed across the whole network. That is, every sample activates a similarly large number of nodes distributed across the network as shown on the right. We note that when a network memorizes samples, the topology of its activation binary graph yields a simplicial complex with few or no holes. Whereas, when the network generalizes, the topology of its functional graph has many holes. We can use the creation and destruction of these functional holes to determine whether a network has learned to generalize to unseen samples. We measure generalization using the average life and midlife of these functional holes. For a network to generalize, we wish life to be as large as possible and midlife as small as possible. This is shown in these results. On the first row, we plot the average life of functional holes against a generalization gap. On the second, we plot the inverse of midlife of functional holes against the generalization gap. Note that as the generalization gap increases, the life and inverse midlife of the network decrease. This is independent of the network or vision problem we have tested. We can use these correlations to identify how well a trained deep net will perform on unseen testing samples without the need of any testing data. We thus propose that in order to evaluate their algorithms, researchers and practitioners use the approach summarized on the screen. First, train your deep neural network with your training set. Then, compute the topology of the functional graph and estimate the generalization gap using the algorithm we provide on GitHub. If the estimated generalization gap is large, you need to change the network's topology, loss function, or use a larger training set. Make the appropriate modifications and repeat the process until the generalization gap estimated by our algorithm decreases sufficiently. Then, use a sequestered testing dataset to verify that, indeed, the generalization gap is as good as expected. If confirmed, you are done. You now have a network that has learned to generalize to unseen samples. Thank you.